You could average 8% per year and still lose two thirds of your life savings. How you average matters. I'm, uh, I'm glad to be here. We got a great article here uh, from Ruben Miller. He's got a blog called Fortunes in Frictions. Posts some really good stuff. Uh, he is a CFA, a chartered financial analyst. Uh, oftentimes when you read articles by CFAs, they get to be a little dense, a little hard to read, and lots of details. But he does a great job here of summing something up uh, for individuals in a way that's digestible, it's easy to understand, and gives you some good analogies too. Yeah, well, and what's he say? He says, your investment performance is a collection of periodic returns through time. Mm -hmm. We know this, right? But, you know, our experience of investment performance <laughs> and periodic returns, it's different. It's it's what you hear on the news. It's account statements. Yeah. It's advisor Dow's updates. 30%, it's yeah. a collection of periodic updates through time. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've heard it. They go, oh, it's a bad year for the market, huh? Mm -hmm. you know, Market's up like 20%. And, or even this year, I had somebody that said, oh, yeah, the, the economy is really struggling. Have you, did you, what, <laughs> what news outlet did you follow? I mean, the, the economic data is actually pointing Pretty to strong. us being in a really darn good place. It's like, oh no, I hear all this talk about recession and this and that. And it's like, there's a lot of noise that's out there. There's a lot of noise. And I think, we, we just need to eliminate that noise. And what I hear all the time is I reach out our leadership team, Marshall, myself, and, and the rest of our you know team, we, we actually actively reach out to our clients and ask them for feedback. What are mm -hmm. we doing well? What can we do better? And I get from for me, time and time again, a lot of that feedback is I just don't worry about the market anymore. You know, I just don't look at that stuff anymore. I know I'm going to be in a good place regardless of what happens in Washington. I just don't watch the headlines. And if you turn off the news, it's amazing how much of a positive impact that can make in your life. But it can be hard to do when everything in your financial life that trickles down to your personal life is dependent on the market doing well in order for you to be able to maintain your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. This is why it's Fix it. Fix that. It's yeah. very fixable. A good financial plan gives you that peace of mind, regardless of what the market's doing. But yeah. that it, being said, well, yeah. I don't want to cut you well, off. No, I'm just saying that mm -hmm. to, to get back to the article here, it has to do with, I think the, a lot of the peace of mind that's created is by reducing volatility, reducing these big swings that you've probably experienced during most of your financial mm -hmm. life. And I think it's important to understand those swings and the impact of your on your bottom line. If we look at the last couple of years, it speaks directly to that. In 2022, we look at global markets, MSCI World Total Return Index down 18% in 2022. Yep. What happened in 2023? Up 24%. So if the market is down 18 and then up 24, we go, well, 24 minus 18, that's 6%. Mm -hmm. So, well, good. It's down 18, it's up 24. I made 6%. You're up 6%. Made 3% a year. Yeah. Right? Right. It, but then that is, I, we laugh about it, mm -hmm. but this is the way investment returns have been communicated Forever. For, I mean, since yeah. 70s, 80s. I and mean, this is just Especially mutual probably funds. beyond that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, you probably take this back to, you know, the days in Egypt where they're giving you how many different rocks that, that you've averaged over time, right? Because it's if you communicate it that way, it often paints a much rosier picture Absolutely. than you actually yeah. get at the end of the day. Because if you look at up 24, down 18, and you put it on a dollar weighted basis because that's what matters, right? Who cares what the percentage is? How much money do I have at the mm -hmm. end of the day? The actual return over two years, up 24, down 18, it's 1.7% per year. It's not 3% per year. Right. And you have to make sure those things are dollar weighted. This becomes extremely important when you step into retirement. If you'd like to take the information that you've gleaned here to the next level, all you have to do is this, click the link in the description and schedule a 15 minute phone consultation with an advisor on our team where you can get answers to your own unique questions and concerns. Average temperature, right? Like he, he talks about Austin, Texas, I'm guessing he's in Austin, yeah. where this summer it reached a peak of 110 degrees mid August, you know, and here recently it's been in the teens, right? So you got a hundred degree swing from August to January. That's a lot of volatility. 
Average temperature, 72, lots of volatility. Compare that to Los Angeles, right? Average temperature, 72, but it stays real close to that 72 all the time, right? What would you, what do you prefer? Smooth, steady 72 or highly volatile 72? Well, hey, and I, we got to be careful. You know, our second largest audience right now listening to the podcast is in Texas. So, <laughs> you know, let's not hate on Texas too much. Hey, you know, there's a lot, lot of great good, stuff a lot about of great Texas. Ta- tacos. The swings in the, in the music, temperature. Lots of music. In the mm-hmm. swing in the temperature in one of those. Because yeah, if you're in Southern California, averaging 72 degrees, or if you're in Austin, Texas, averaging 72 degrees, shouldn't feel like you're ever hitting 72 degrees in Austin, Texas, right? It's 110 degrees, then it's in the teens. And you know, I think a lot of retirees could say the same thing about their 8% stock market return, right? Or their lives, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, what do retirees want? They go, you know what? I mean, there's not too many people saying, you know, I really want to live in Indiana <laughs> when I step into retirement. Yeah, my like, dad was up uh, visiting us this past weekend. And was he? Every single time he's here, he can't wait to tell me why he doesn't understand why anybody lives here. Why would anybody live in Indiana? Why would anybody <laughs> live in Minnesota? Why would you want to endure this mm. when you can afford to no longer have that? He goes, I can afford to no longer have to endure these big swings. So what's he do? He might come back for the holidays Mm -hmm. and complain about it for a few days. While he's here. But what his goal is, is to reduce volatility in the temperature swings. Mm -hmm. So he spends the majority of the winter down in Mexico, the majority of summer up here in in the north. He's just moderating his return. He's moderating (laughs) his swings, right? Yeah. And he's actually doing the same thing with his investment portfolio. You want to be a snowbird in retirement, you should be a snowbird in your investment strategy, you should be a snowbird in your life strategy, right? right? If that's what's important to you, then there's ways that you can accomplish that. Yeah. Ruben here in this article talks, uh, put some numbers to it, right? You, you hear this 8% return thrown around quite a bit, but he shows a $100,000 investment in four different uh, sequences of returns, and they all average 8%, right? You start mm-hmm. with 100,000, you get 8% a year for two years, you go to up to 116. You start with 100,000, you get zero year one, you get 16 year two. Again, average return 8%, you're at 116,000. Third example, you, you lose 10% in the first year, make 26% year two, guess what? Average return 8%, but you're only at 113,400. Now, last example, start with 100,000, go up 100%, lose 84% year two, still an average return of 8%, although your ending wealth is only $32,000. Results are a little different. I mean, you could even go to that second example and say, well, it's not exactly 116,000 in the the first example versus the second example. Sure. Because of compounding returns, Mm -hmm. right? So if you get zero, then you get 16. Sure, you got $116,000. If you get eight, then you get eight. You have about 117,000. You have $116,640, right? right? There's compounding of these returns. When you look at that last example, that's when we opened the show with, you got a hundred grand, 100% return, you're at 200, 84% loss, you're at 32,000. It takes 212.5% to get back to to even. even. Now that's a dramatic example. Some might say, that's unrealistic. Sure. And I would be here to tell you, how, uh, how do you know it's unrealistic? Because if we go back over the last 100 years, we can go back to the Great Depression. Great Depression, from peak to trough, the stock market lost 89% of its value. It took 25 years in total from to, to get back to even after the losses experienced during the Great Depression. Oh. And you've experienced this a couple of times over the last 25 years. Sure. You know, markets that have been down over 50% in, you know, following the tech bubble, following the financial crisis. There's no reason that couldn't happen again. But if, I mean, if you're, you're 20 years out from retirement, who cares? Mm-hmm. You know, but when you get within 10, it really matters. You know, we were working with a gentleman the other day. And you know, when we look at his plan, he, he's 55, once retired, 65. Mm-hmm. He's 10 years out from actually stepping into retirement. And he goes, well, I, I can afford the risk over the next 10 years. I'll just stay heavily invested in the market. And in all likelihood, I mean, the odds are with him that he should be perfectly fine, mm-hmm. you know, and likely that he won't experience loss. And that's most of what he was saying. If we have a bad year, I can make it up. However, it's not about making it up in his situation. He actually needed a return. 
a modest return. Well, he needed to make about 3% a year over the next 10 years so that he could still step into retirement. So we have to understand our average returns and how they're going to impact us pre-retirement and after once we get to that retirement red zone, about 10 Absolutely. years prior to retirement, 10 years after retirement, that's roughly what you would call the retirement red zone where you really have to pay very close attention to this volatility to, to meet your near-term needs. Mm -hmm. When you're putting money in, it doesn't matter. You start taking money out, that's when it matters. That's why you have to build a plan for these worst case scenarios. Yeah, building wealth is, is done really well with dollar cost averaging. When you're starting to take money out in retirement, you reverse dollar cost averaging, creating stable, steady income cannot be done from a, a highly uh, equity focused portfolio, right? There's just too much volatility. Now here's the human element. And this is what I, you know, Marshall and I really were you know, bantering back and forth before we got on the show about this piece where you know, the, the author says, for some people, seasons and variations can be nice, while others prefer reliably temperate climate. Mm -hmm. Reasonable people can disagree. Yeah, and this is where we see reasonable people disagree. You know, where I, I think there are people that want these swings. You know, we could take somebody that says, you know what, I, I'm going to use, because you could accomplish the same goal with two different portfolios if I give an example, right? Let's say that you use a 60-40 mix, stocks and bonds, and you're going to average over time 6% a year back test to, you know, it's probably going to be in mm. this range. So you're going to make 6% a year, and there's going to be years when, and the market might be down 20 and you're down 10, 15 percent. Yep. Market might be up 20, you're up 10 or 15 percent. You still average 6 percent. Or you could use a fixed indexed annuity and never experience a, a, a loss in your portfolio. You get a zero this year, the market's down 20. You make, hey, market's up 20% next year, maybe make 10%, right? You you don't get the big highs and big lows that you would get mm -hmm. with that 60 40 portfolio, but you might still be averaging the same rate of return between those two different tools that you could use. Right. And, and what, what I find though is, if we're not really clear on what we want, if you're not very clear on not just what you want to average, but how you want to get there, you can end up in a tool that you find very frustrating. Mm -hmm. And we see this, right? We'll have somebody yeah, that's pros and cons to in each, a, right? In, let's say you move into that product that is still going to average the 6%. Market's down 15% and you go, I got a zero. I'm not happy, mm -hmm. you know? And, well, that's interesting. Why would you be unhappy with a zero in the markets down 15%? Well, because the last 40 years of investing, I'm used to being down when the market's down. Mm. I kind of like these swings. Then the market's up 20, I'm only getting 10. Now I'm frustrated on the other end. Yeah. You know, so if you're very clear, then we can say, hey, you don't have to go with this tool. Let's use a 60-40 portfolio and you can get the same average return and you get to have some of those swings. I know retirees that don't want a snowbird. I know retirees yeah, that want to live love in the north. In Michigan, yeah. They love living mm -hmm. in northern Michigan. I know people that live in the UP in retirement. They're mm -hmm. 85 years old living in the, the upper peninsula. They love it. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? but hey, we're all human and we we want what we want and I do think there are re there's a lot of advisors that say no. Nobody needs that volatility once they step into retirement. No, nobody needs the volatility. They need to be in a tool that's going to give them this consistent return. Let's tighten these these returns on either side so you don't experience the volatility. See it on the other side of things, too, where people say, no, retirees, they need to be in the market. They need to experience volatility. They need these ups and downs. You know, They don't need that stability. They shouldn't be giving up the downside. They shouldn't be giving up any of the upside. I think it's ultimately up to you to really yeah. define who you are as an individual and what kind of experience you want to have with your investment returns in retirement. Right. And understanding yourself to understand the pitfalls and the challenges with each one of those strategies. I mean, that's what's so fun about this. What gets frustrating is when firms or the talking heads, they only believe one like their line. way, their, their way is the best, right? Um, there's no wrong answer. These tools are just tools. They're not right. They're not wrong. It's, it's how you use them that can become the problem. So I would leave you with two questions. You know, what is the average return that you need at this stage in your life? And number two, is there an easier way to get to that average rate of return? Is there an easier way to get the results that you need at this time in your life? 
If you want to get a link to this article, dig in a little bit deeper, check it out in the show notes. If you want some visuals, check us out on YouTube and you can watch the video there. It is my mission to deliver clarity and purpose and elevate meaning in your life. And we do that in a couple of different ways. If you're new to the show, I want you to know what to expect. If you've been around for a while, you know what to expect. We have both financial and non-financial conversations here on the show. And every other Monday, we bring to you a world-class guest in a long-form interview-based podcast format. And then every single Friday, we give you a short-form podcast. We talk about trending topics in the financial and non-financial realms. And today, I'm actually going to be joined by my good friend, Marshall Johnson. We're going to be covering a weekend reading article with you. So what's weekend reading? That's an email. We go out, we do the research, we sift through everything, and then I curate an email to go out to you every Friday with four articles on trending topics with summaries and my personal takeaways from those articles to help you make better decisions. But not only are you getting those articles and great reading material, you'll receive webinar invitations, assessments, podcast highlights, book giveaways, all kinds of great stuff that you're going to find week in and week out as a subscriber. And one of the cool things you get to do is we reach out to you about a week prior to me actually interviewing our world-class guests and we ask what kind of questions you want to bring into that conversation and then I do my best to co-architect that interview along with you. To get signed up for weekend reading, super easy. Just shoot us a text. We'll shoot you a link to get signed up. Text the key letters WR to 866-482-9559.